This is an online training session for Goodwin College. How to use Turnitin Assignment in Blackboard using our Blackboard Direct integration. To begin, you would log into Blackboard and access your course. After you access your course, you would go to the content area of your course where you can have assessments and assignments. Go to Assessments, hover over that, and you'll see Turnitin Direct Assignment is an option. So I'm going to click on Turnitin Direct Assignment to create a Turnitin Assignment in Blackboard. First, enter the assignment name. And then a description or instructions for students. For submission method, you have the option of file upload, text submission, or both. Then you enter the number of points for the overall grade and the number of assignment parts. You can have up to five for multi-part assignments. In order to have multiple drafts submitted, more than one draft of a paper, or if you have multiple files that should be submitted for the same assignment. If you do additional assignment parts, those assignment parts can have their own independent dates. So for example, if you had two parts, you could have part one with a set of dates and part two with a later set of dates. When it comes to setting your dates, the start date will show as today's date, also the time right now. The due date is here as well. It defaults to one month in the future, but of course you can edit that. The post date is when students can see scores, comments, feedback, and marks left by the instructor for the students. It does not apply to the similarity report or grammar check. The post date is when they can see feedback from instructors. You have some options on how you can edit this. By default, the post date is one month in the future like the due date was. Some instructors like to have the post date equal to the due date so that students can see feedback immediately after the due date passes. Sometimes teachers and instructors will like to have a few days between the due date and the post date. That gives them time to mark papers before students can see feedback. And another option, it's possible to set this up so that students can see feedback immediately after submission. After the instructor leaves feedback, it would be immediately available if you set the post date in the past. So rather than after the due date, before the due date. The way I've just set it up with the post date immediately after the start date, any feedback entered by the instructor for the students will be immediately visible. So a few different approaches to the post date. Then exclusions. You can exclude sections of a paper from the similarity report if you want to. You can do small match exclusions, excluding by a number of words, or a percentage. I typically advise not doing a small match exclusion until you have a good feel for how much content would be excluded. You can experiment with the small match exclusion on individual papers if you want to. So for example, I could exclude matches that are less than 5% similar. I could do it by a set number of words in a match instance as well. You can also exclude bibliographic material. That would also exclude the references and works cited sections of the paper in addition to the bibliography. And there's an exclusion for quoted material that would exclude anything within quotation marks. Anonymous marking is an option 
where it would hide the names of student authors from papers until after the post date. This would hide the student names in the system, not on the paper itself. So within the system and how the assignments displayed in Blackboard, typically you'd see student names next to submissions. Anonymous marking would hide those so that you can go in and mark papers without knowing the student author. This would be to remove any unintended potential bias from the grading process. There's also an option for translated matching. This would translate papers submitted in certain languages other than English into English to do a comparison against English papers in our student paper database. The grammar check through ETS eRater is through a third party partnership we have with ETS. This would do an automatic grammar check on the paper. You can set the level of handbook in use, whether it's US, UK, dictionaries, or both. And then you set the categories enabled, spelling, grammar, usage, mechanics, and style. And the option as to whether or not you want to use Grademark for feedback, delivering feedback to students. You can set the repository that papers would go to, either no repository, standard repository, which is our global student paper database, an institutional repository, which would be local and specific to your school. If you set it to no repository, then papers would not be added and could not be compared against in the future. Standard repository would do that globally, so across schools, papers would be compared. Institution repository would put papers in a local repository that other schools cannot compare against, but locally you can. I would recommend always putting papers in a repository. In this case though, we're doing a training session, so I selected no repository. You can decide then what papers are compared against. The global student paper database now has over 1 billion student papers in it. The internet content includes over 68 billion web pages that are archived going back over eight years. So what that means is if we've crawled the text on a website, even if it's taken down, we can still return a match against it. And then periodicals, journals, and publications. This compares against over 183 million individual publication articles from over 140,000 periodicals, journals, and publications. It includes library networks like Emerald, Sage, Gale, Crossref, Acumen, Grade Guru, and EBSCO. You can decide whether grades are revealed immediately or at the post date, and whether or not the grades from Turnitin should push through or be ignored, as far as whether they would go to the Blackboard Grade Center. Then you can set the report generation speed. There are three ways that the similarity reports can be generated. Immediately with no resubmissions, that would be one submission only. Immediately allowing resubmissions, this would generate immediate similarity reports on the first three resubmissions. And if students attempted to submit more than that, a 24-hour delay would kick in on any resubmissions beyond three. This is to encourage students to really think about their revisions and discourage the overuse of the resubmission option. And then the third option would generate reports on the due date. It would hold all papers until the due date and then generate similarity reports. With the grading schema, the options here would not include any custom schema for the school. However, there is a workaround I'll talk about later. I'll just choose score for now. Then for rubric, you would select a rubric for grading and to create one or edit a rubric or import or export rubrics, you would go to the rubric manager. 
So I'm going to click on this icon directly to the right to launch the rubric manager. There's a menu in the upper left hand corner. Here you'll see where you have the ability to create a new rubric. This is the standard scoring method. For scales, I see point values in each column. And for criteria, weights in each row. You can add or delete rows or columns. Add by using the plus signs. Delete by hovering over a row or column where you can see a trash can icon to delete. There are two other scoring methods. The second is the custom rubric that has point values in each cell. And the third, qualitative. This has no point values or weights. It's possible to create rubrics here, and if you want to edit one, you would duplicate it first to make a copy. In the upper right hand corner, you have import and export options. So it is possible to import rubrics, for example. If I click import, it'll allow me to select a file, and I can import a rubric from elsewhere. You can import from Excel or you can use Turnitin rubric files. Those are files that are only viewable and editable in Turnitin. So I just added a rubric. You'll see that you have options here in the drop down. Now I can select that rubric and use it for this assignment. A few more options, whether or not students can view originality reports, whether late submissions are allowed. This would apply to first time submissions only, not resubmissions. It would allow a single late submission if the student has not submitted anything yet. Then you have the option to save instructor defaults. This would save all these optional settings as defaults going forward. Now, if I click Create Assignment, the assignment will be created in Blackboard. Now, if there's an error, you have to make an adjustment. You see you have options here, things that you can adjust. And then you'll see that you have the assignment set up here and displayed. If you ever want to change something, you can see you can change the dates here if you go to edit parts, for example. So if I wanted to change the post date, I could do that. So let's say I wanted to make it 1-8, for example. Can update parts and make the change. So again, your post date has to be after the start date, but it can be before the due date. That's why I made that little change there. You'll see after you create the assignment under tools, you can launch the rubric manager from here. You can also launch the quick mark manager. You also have the ability to share and create and save marks that can be immediately dragged and dropped or inserted onto a paper. So in the quick mark manager, you can use the plus sign to create sets of quick marks, and then the plus sign here to create the actual marks to add to the set, and then those marks can be added to papers later. You can share them similarly to how you can share rubrics, importing and exporting sets of quick marks. Also see gear wheels here, allowing you to launch the peer mark manager for peer review assignments and another icon for launching the actual reviews.